Within the universe of Resident Evil, there would be an organization that was known to be the rival company of the Umbrella Corporation, in which they would do anything to sabotage their operations. In this video, we'll be going through the lore surrounding the organization and their history throughout the video games. The organization was a rival company of the Umbrella Corporation that developed bioweapons that were highly illegal. The company would compete with Umbrella throughout 1998 all the way to 2003 in an aggressive way to the point of sending in spies using turncoats to sabotage the corporation within, which would lead into Umbrella's operation being dismantled with the use of the rival company's military unit being known as HCF or Host Hive Capture Force. The organization would take over the entire market after the collapse of the Umbrella Corporation. However, the company would soon fall into bankruptcy in 2003, merging into Tricell Incorporated in 2004. The company possessed advanced technology and deep pockets of resources, two of these being both financial and political, giving them free reign of their area of society. The organization would make several attempts to destroy the operations of their competitors, not for the greater good, but for their own benefit in their market. The company would create several products, as they would call them, being creatures that were created by the usage of the various viruses. With the general background of the rival company out of the way, let's go through the known bioweapons of this organization. The Hunter 2 was a direct copy of Umbrella's Hunter model, however this one was to be more enhanced than the previous version, with it being known as the superior version within their organization. The creature was created by Albert Wesker, who gave the reptile creature the T-virus infection, and a few surgeries later, the reptile would turn into this creature. Even with the creature being a copy of the original, it is more than Umbrella's version, as it possesses a heightened intelligence level, being able to receive orders via a special frequency. They can also track targets with the use of the seeker devices. The sound waves presumably are received from a device located on the body, most likely to be located on the head with an eyepiece being attached. While having a similar appearance to the second hunter, with it being a mutated variant to the previous entry, the main difference between the two would be the distinct colour of the skin and its powerful poisonous attack that would incapacitate those who were to be scratched or clawed by it. The other differences would be the purplish veins, scales, and the eyes were of a reddish colour. The purpose of the sweeper, much like the name suggests, was to sweep through several areas to kill anything or anyone that initially escaped whatever came before. Being created through the use of the T. Veronica virus, the organization had created the Jabberwock S3, in which the creature looks like it had been designed, with the intention of doing what the Umbrella Corporation had failed to do with their Bandersnatch experiment. Through the use of this virus, they were able to enhance the creature, giving it eight distinct limbs with blades sprouting from the ends. With four of them having the same size, the others would vary in shape and size. The creature would also possess a heightened level of intelligence and could complete tasks in several circumstances. The organization would have ties to the events that plagued Raccoon City, Rockford Island, the dismantling of Umbrella's seat of power, and finally their overall downfall. However, I am trying to keep this from being a timeline or history video for now, so I will give you a brief explanation as to how they are connected to these events, whether they are to be obvious or not so much. 
In 1998, the organization would place a spy into Umbrella's ranks with that being a woman by the name of Ada Wong, who would use a relationship within the corporation to gain leeway and information that she could then funnel back to her superiors. However, the facility that was based in Raccoon City was to fall into chaos when a saboteur was to release the E strain known as Epsilon into the water supply, causing an outbreak. After these events, the organization would shift its focus to NEST, and the research being conducted by Dr. William Birkin, who was working on the G-Virus project. Several agents would be sent to another facility within Raccoon City to spy on Umbrella's operations. However, the E-strain of the virus would find its way into the city's main water supply, causing the city to fall into anarchy as another outbreak occurs. The rival company would lose all contact with Wong and her associates during this pandemic. The organization would then send its military force into attacking one of the Umbrella bases being known as Rockford Island. However, within the skirmish, the T-Virus would get loose and infect the soldiers, turning them into zombies. The organization in a later period of time would gain the combat data for various BOWs along with the samples of the T, T Veronica and G viruses. The organization would send in Wesker to infiltrate the last known stronghold of Umbrella residing within Caucasus, Russia. However, the events with their adversaries would destroy the last stronghold and their name of the Umbrella Corporation would soon blow away within the wind like smoke, allowing their rival company, only known as the organization, to swoop in, claiming the entire market for themselves. But this would not last long, as they themselves would eventually fall into bankruptcy in 2003, losing all that they had worked so hard to take, eventually merging into Tricell in 2004, becoming one with them to continue the work under their banner. And I'm afraid that's all I could recover for the lore of this rival to the Umbrella Corporation, being only known as the Organization, which was probably referenced by many characters of the series leading up to 2004. But regarding the Resident Evil universe, this is only the beginning, as there is plenty more to talk about in the future. Thank you for watching. If you did enjoy the lore presented today, then please hit the like button, comment your thoughts below and I look forward to hearing from you. Sign up to join the British Alliance today by hitting the subscribe button and bringing in the notification bell so you never miss an upload and be sure to check out the memberships by hitting the join button to view the two tiers. Be sure to have a look at the merch store and I will see all of you among the cosmos and be sure to have a good one.